What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're we'll be going over Scream primarily in this video today, going over the parallels that exist between Scream 6 and Scream 2, because there are several, so naturally, as if none of the others parallel each other, Scream 6 is being considered a modern Scream 2 remake, which is fine. What I wanted to do was go over the similarities that exist while also pointing out the differences that a lot of people are not talking about, or I don't really think they're talking about as much as they're talking about the similarities. So starting off with the similarities number one the most talked about similarity is the vengeful parent angle mrs loomis back in 1997 was terrorizing sydney to get back at the woman who killed her son billy who we know in the original film was one of our first ghost face killers scream six is offering us a character named wayne bailey who is terrorizing sam because she killed richie wayne's son who was the killer in scream five both parents also seem to feel some type of regret for their roles in raising their kids because perhaps one if nancy didn't walk out billy probably would still be alive potentially and if wayne didn't feed richie's obsession then perhaps it wouldn't have led to his son becoming toxic and ultimately dying the second similarity is Sam now dealing with unwanted exposure and her because of her ties to Billy, a conspiracy theory in Gail's new book, similar to how Sydney was receiving unwanted exposure and having to deal with that. Since the events of Scream were turned into a movie, Gail wrote a book and Cotton's name being cleared from it all as it pertains to who killed her mother now being exposed as the, the real person that being since it wasn't Cotton. The third similarity between the two is Gail Weathers is swung on. There's more, but this is just, again, the third one I want to point out. <laughs> Gail Weathers is swung on for the first time since Scream 2, thanks to Tara Carpenter, who manages to land her punch when Sam's first efforts don't connect. This punch is brought on by frustration over Gail's recent book, similar to how Sydney's initial problems towards Gail when, was when she also wrote a book on her mother and then the Woodsboro murders and her setting up an interview with Cotton that Sydney didn't even know about. Now, the fourth similarity I want to talk about, of course, will be the college setting. Scream 2, we know, is at Windsor College in Ohio, and Scream 6 is at Blackmore University in New York. Number five, the fifth and final similarity I want to touch on is the fake-out deaths. I'm going to use Chad as the example here. So in Scream 2, Dewey is presumably killed while Gail watches on, unable to do anything. Now, his attack was mostly off-screen until Gail turned around to notice the attack, and by the time she turned around, Dewey's being slammed onto the glass. He slid or he slid down in a fashion that would signal Dewey was killed. And then in Scream 6, Chad is stabbed by multiple killers at once while the audience is shown the attack with no room for imagination like there was with Dewey's. Similar to how Gail was looking on, Sam and Tara are looking on in sadness as he presumably falls to his death both parties though at the end of the movie are revealed to be alive chad survived just like dewey survived of course we also have the theater finale locations being similar as well but i want to go into now some of the differences with scream 6 compared to scream 2 that are very in your face but overlooked to criticize scream 6 for being similar to the beloved sequel now for starters, one, Scream 6 has three main killers and Scream 2 only had two. Debbie also was planning to frame her partner Mickey since he was an active killer and completely out of his mind according to her. Wayne was joined by his son Ethan and daughter Quinn, something Scream 2 does not have, which is a family unit that didn't intend to turn on each other. Wayne was also actively stealing Ghostface evidence and letting his son Richie build a collection since he was such a big big fan of the staff franchise wayne is a lot more hands-on in his child's demise as opposed to debbie who simply just walked away from her family wayne also had a job on the line as a public servant since he was in the nypd and an actual real cop so that definitely is an underlying motivation for him that's just one difference Second, ties into conspiracy theories. Debbie didn't intend to assassinate Sydney's character the way our three main killers try to or intend to assassinate Sam's character in Scream 6. Debbie knew exactly what was going on. She knew Sydney was acting in self-defense when she killed Billy, just like Wayne knew that Sam was acting in self-defense. However, Debbie, Debbie simply cared to kill Sydney and make it look as if Mickey had acted all on his own when it comes to these things. Wayne and his kids go out of their way to upgrade their revenge plans by acknowledging 
the current trends of cancel culture, misinformation, and conspiracy theories by starting a nasty rumor about Sam that says that she killed everyone in Screen 5 and of course that Amber and Richie were innocent. The finish line for them was going to be having having framed some type of vigilante who they say took matters into their own deluded hands because they believed the rumors about Sam. So that's one of the second differences. The third difference is unmasking a killer during the opening sequence. Scream 6 did the unthinkable and had a copycat killer unmasked during the opening of Scream 6, who would then be killed by our main group of killers. Now, Jason ends up catfishing his Blackmore professor, Laura, into a date only to lure her into an alley to kill her. Jason unmasks himself and he goes back home. Jason and his partner, Greg, are disposed of by Wayne because their goals interfered with the Bailey's plans to tarnish Sam reputation they were more interested in continuing Richie's Richie's film now the fourth thing I want to go over is Gail's new book Gail's new book doesn't seem to come from a place of self-approval but rather a tough decision to make in this movie Scream 2 Gail comes off as writing that book to further validate her own claims, which is fine, but a lot of it is definitely tied into rubbing it in Sydney's face once more that she was wrong about Cotton Weary. Scream 6 does not abolish that empathy that we've seen unlocked inside of Gail. Gail apparently struggled to make a deal related to selling the stab rights, I believe is what was stated, and decided to write a book about Scream 5 instead to make up for that because she needs to make money. Essentially just doing it for money and because someone was going to write about it anyway in her own words, which she is not wrong about. There's nothing she was trying to prove against Sam with this book. And this is highlighted by their heartfelt moments at the shrine and Gail's frustration with them being mad at her. She never wanted to like seek any type of self-approval from this the way I can clearly see she was doing in Scream 2. And the fifth thing I want to point out that's a difference here is Blackmore doesn't shine brighter than the city it's located in. They definitely make use of the New York setting. We spend very little time around this campus as opposed to Scream 2, which doesn't make any real use outside of the college campus. Scream 6 takes full advantage of the New York setting, gives you these great set pieces to explore regarding the subway, a bodega attack sequence, a ladder sequence. Uh, there's so much that happens off campus despite this movie paralleling going back to college. It's not entirely set on the Blackmore University campus. I've even seen some people argue they would like to see Scream 7 dive into the campus of Blackmore if we are still going to be in college for these characters, which I doubt. But those are some of the similarities and some of the differences that exist between Scream 6 and Scream 2. Let me know what you think about these down in the comment section below. And again, I know there are more. These aren't all of them. <laughs> if you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.